Hello everyone, my name is Hannah. Welcome to a new recap video. So this recap video is going to be all about Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. So this is the second book in the Empire of the Vampire series. The first book is Empire of the Vampire. I do have a recap video up for this one. So if the third book ever comes out, there are both of these videos to recap both of these books before going into the third one. So the nature of these videos is to be entirely spoilery and go over all of the events that happen in Empire of the Damned and recap it and just dive in depth into what happened in this book. So if you haven't read it yet and you don't want to be spoiled, do not watch this video. This is the only spoiler warning that I will give. And with that, let's get into the recap. All right, so we start this book six days after the events of what occurred at the very end of Empire of the Vampire. So if you've watched that recap video or you remember at the very end of Empire of the Vampire, Gabriel basically tries to kill Jean-Francois, who is like the historian who is trying to take this tale down and Gabriel is recounting his tale, basically how he got up to this point. And so we open this book up in Jean-Francois's point of view. He is getting hot and heavy with some of his thralls. So if you don't remember, a thrall is a mortal, but they are enthralled to a vampire because they've drank their blood for three nights in a row. And so they get this kind of like obsessed love towards them that they can't control and so he has these three thralls like in bed with him and stuff and he gets called to talk to the empress Margot. So Margot is the vampire that created Jean-Francois so he is like he calls her mother and stuff and basically she's like get back by Gabriel you've had six days to recover from like the blood boiling that he tried to inflict on you I need the rest of the story go back get the story. So, reluctantly, Jean-Francois returns to one Gabriel de Leon to hear the rest of his tale. I don't know why I was holding the book up that whole time. I did not need to be doing that. <laughs> anyway, so we're back with Gabriel then, and Gabriel starts telling his tale again right where he left off at the end of Empire of the Vampire, where he, like, went into Saint Michon and killed a bunch of the Silver Saints and Silver Sisters, including Chloe Sauvage, who was a friend to him, and he ends up massacring and killing all of them in order to save Dior because they were going to kill Dior in this ritual to try to end Day's death. So, yeah, it literally picks up right after that point, and Gabriel says, uh, Dior, you should come and meet my sister, who is Selene, who we know as the Lyat and she's been like following them and basically she was the reason that Gabriel was able to go save Dior. She gave him some of her blood and like saved him but because it's the blood of a vampire he has one of three drinks of her blood or whatever so he's like close to getting enthralled by her. Well not close but like he's already had one and he only needs two more to be like a thrall to her. So he's not a big fan of that, but Selene claims that she knows like what to do with Dior and like how to still end Day's death. But basically she says she knows the answers to figure out what they need to do with Dior. So they go off to find these answers. On their way, they end up running into Gabriel's old apprentice, Lachlan. So Lachlan knows that Gabriel has been like excommunicated from the Silver Order and he knows he knows like the whole thing, but he still really respects Gabe. Gabe taught him like everything that he knows. And so he agrees to kind of like stay with him for a little while. And so they kind of like stick together for a bit and basically Lachlan is like a little bit suspicious of like why Gabriel is with a vampire, Selene, because he's like, I don't understand, but I trust you, Gabe. And then he also knows that there's something up with Dior, but they're trying to keep it, uh, you know, under wraps so that not everybody needs to know this. So yeah, Lachlan is basically uh, going with the, the crew and staying with Gabe because he trusts Gabe and he's kind of like, okay, well, I don't trust this other stuff, but I do trust you, Gabe. They end up getting attacked by these vampires, the Divok, and the Divok have these, this like extra strength. They're like, not, not vampires are already like stronger than mortals, obviously, but they have like enhanced strength abilities. During this attack, Selene ends up drinking the blood of one of these vampires and basically like sucking them dry. They turn to ash but then she absorbs the power of that vampire which is not normal. And then she also can use sanguimency which is the ability that Gabriel has where you can like control somebody's blood or like boil their blood but unlike Gabriel she doesn't need to put her hands on somebody in order to use it. 
Then we run into Phoebe, who is the mountain lion that we met in Empire of the Vampire that was with Sersha and Chloe and like the crew back then. But they didn't know that she was a dusk dancer, which means she can shift between a human form and an animal form. So she was always in mountain lion form, but now that they've found her, she is in her like dusk dancer human humanoid form. They get news that Chateau Aveline has been like under siege and Dior convinces them to try to go back to help out Aaron and Baptiste even though it kind of seems like it's a lost cause and when they get there everybody is gone everything is in ruin and they end up finding Aaron's sword. It's like crushed under this giant rock so they assume that he is dead as well as Baptiste because nobody's there. Elaine tells them then about the fifth bloodline, the Asana, and they are called the Faithful, and they have the ability to consume the blood of other vampires and then like take their souls in, which is why Selene slash Lyathi always refers to themselves as we a lot of the time because it's more than one soul inside of her. Then two of the princes of forever find them. So it's the two eldest daughters of Fabian, the forever king. And so these two twins, they call them the terrors. I think their names are Alba and Aline. And then the Divok from before attack again. So they're like fighting over who's going to take Dior basically. And Kiara, they call her wolf mother. She's one of the Divok. She basically attacks the Voss twins and has like this incredible strength like more than a Divock vampire should have which is kind of sus like how did she get that why does she have this like extra ability basically and in this giant fight Phoebe gets like crushed to death and then Dior and Gabe fall off this like precipice again and are saved by Selene, except Dior is able to get up to safety, but then Selene drops Gabriel and just like plummets to his death. And at that point, Gabe says, I didn't see Dior for months after that. And Jean-Francois is kind of like, all right, well, I'm gonna go get the rest of the story then since you weren't with Dior don't really care about what happened to you at this point in time. So like clearly you survived, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm gonna go talk to your sister, okay bye. And he goes to talk to Selene, who we now know is also being held prisoner somewhere nearby. So this is the first time in the series then that we get like kind of a point of view shift before we were doing Gabriel and his multiple timelines. And now we have this whole new point of view. So we get Selene and her piousness and she is now recounting what happened after Gabriel fell slash she let him go and what's going on with Dior basically because Jean-Francois wants Dior's story. So Kiara ends up basically killing Selene and like it almost looks like there's the point of no return and Jean-Francois is like how are you then able to tell this story and she's like shut up just let me tell it you'll find out later. And Kiara takes Dior captive then and is like clearly she's valuable if Gabriel de Leon and this random vampire were protecting her and a dusk dancer were protecting her and the terrors the Voss twins were after her so clearly she's valuable somehow so I'm just gonna take her with me. Dior escapes um, only to then be recaptured and as she's being recaptured there is a thrall um, who is like mortally wounded or stabbed through somehow and Kiara is like not going to save him at all and Dior ends up using her blood on the thrall. So like I said the thrall is the person that's like obsessed with the vampire that like forced them to drink their blood and they have no control over this like overwhelming love. So this kid Joaquin was a thrall to Kiara and Kiara was just going to leave him. She like I mean obviously it's a human so she doesn't really care about him so she was just gonna leave him Dior however has other plans and she helps cure him by using her blood and like heals him and that's how Kiara finds out about Dior's abilities so Kiara and the other Divok end up coming together with like this large caravan and there's like all of these human like slaves basically being held in these wagons and they're all headed to Dunmergain is I think how you pronounce it she finds out that Baptiste is actually alive he's being held prisoner with one of them so they're together and Aaron DeCoste is also alive but he's in rough shape so he's not actually alive alive he is like capital D dead he 
he's been made into a vampire and that is not so great for him because he has the aegis that like silver tattoo all over him which burns vampires and so it's like literally burning him and he can't make it stop so in order to like stop his cr screaming kiara like flays the tattoo off of him it's a very brutal scene to have him like get flayed and then because he's a vampire he heals really quickly and so it heals and comes back and so it's like a vicious cycle of like him being flayed so that his tattoo isn't burning him and he'll stop screaming but then it comes back and so it's it just like a vicious cycle so then they make it to Dunmergain and Kiara brings Dior to the Divok elders. So like the priory of the Divok clan is Nikita and then his eldest sister, Lily. And they basically force Dior to demonstrate her abilities. Lily, although she's not the priory of the Divok, she like... She's got, I mean, she's the eldest, so it deserves some respect, but she's not like in charge in charge. But anyways, she has a lot of thralls and the one thrall that she calls Worm, she calls her forward and stabs her three times in the chest, just like Joaquin was because she wants to see exactly how it was done and then forces Dior to heal Worm. And she kind of looks at Dior then as like this prize and then makes Dior drink her blood because if she drinks it three nights, if she drinks her blood for three nights, she'll become enthralled to her as well. And so it's like a new toy for Lily to play with basically. While in her cell then, Dior finds a moth made of blood and that's how we then find out that it is like, she calls it her moat, but it's like a fragment of Selene. And so Selene is like obviously very badly injured and she's just got this small little piece of her that can be there to help Dior. She can't really talk because she's just like a blood moth, but she can like tap her wings on Dior and that's how they communicate, like one tap for yes, two for no. And Dior then manages to escape yet again because she is resourceful um, and she escapes. And as she's about to like leave, she sees Baptiste and she's like, I can't leave without him. I need to go save him. And so she's like, hey, I'm escaping. Come with me. And he's like, I'll be right there. And turns out that he is enthralled to Kiara. And Kiara then recaptures Dior yet again and brings her back to her cell. And then we find out, of course, that Baptiste is enthralled. Nikita, the head honcho, is threatening Baptiste because he's got Aaron and Aaron is like, I will never bow to you. Everything that you, every like form of love that you get from me, if you throw me, everything is going to be stolen. I will never, I will never bow to you. And then Nikita threatens Baptiste because now they know that he has Baptiste. And so Aaron is kind of like, all right, I'll give in. I will willingly drink your blood. I will willingly become a thrall but you have to leave Baptiste alone. And then he drinks his blood and becomes a thrall to Nikita. Then Fabian comes and like requests that Dior be returned to him, or he uses the, the twins to request that Dior be returned to him, that he Dior is his and whatever. And Nikita's like, mm, I finders keepers kind of thing. And Fabian then like offers a trade. They work out a trade that Nikita agrees to. And Lily is upset about that because she's like, she's mine now. I'm going to thrall her and get all of her secrets. And she's like, obviously more valuable. You can't do this. And Nikita's like, well, get me her secrets. Prove to me that she's more valuable and I won't do the trade. And so Lily then makes Dior drink her blood for the third time. And then Dior becomes a thrall to Lily. At this point then in the present timeline, Jean-Francois is annoyed with Selene's like preachiness because Selene is kind of holier than thou kind of attitude and is like, all right, let me just, I need a break from you. Let me just go back to Gabe and get his side of the story of like what happened after you let him go. So I'll see you later. So then we're back to when Gabe fell after Selene dropped him and he should have died and yet he didn't because Phoebe saves him. Turns out Phoebe actually was not crushed to death. She is alive and she helps manage to save him, nurse him back to health a little bit. And then they decide to work together to save Dior because Phoebe has made this vow to help protect Dior with her life. She knows that they call her the godling. Um, so she knows that she's like the holy grail of Sammy Sean and it's easier for them to just work together because they both have the same goal. However, one night um, she convinces Gabriel to dance with her. There's like this kind of like tension between them and Gabriel goes and is dreaming of Astrid getting hot and heavy in his dream and then wakes up to Phoebe 
giving him a blowjob. So a little bit of a misunderstanding on Phoebe's end of what was actually happening there. And they kind of fight about it because he's like, no, I can't with anybody else. It's not my wife. Like, get out of here. I can't look at you. They have a fight and she leaves. But then Gabe is attacked by his former apprentice, Lachlan, who goes to Sam Michon and hears all about the massacre that Gabriel wrought on the Silver Saints. And basically he's like, you are an absolute traitor and now you're going to die. So they're actually able to capture Gabe and take him away, but comes Phoebe to save him. They're able to get away and then Phoebe kind of gives her backstory on what happened to her and basically they kind of bond over the fact that they both lost their loved one. Phoebe lost her husband and then because she was grieving over that and she was pregnant with their child she lost their unborn child as well and so they kind of um, bond over that like shared grief. Then Phoebe and Gabe start to get hot and heavy together again um, and are interrupted by Lachlan and the crew coming to take Gabe away and kill Phoebe. Lachlan actually shoots Phoebe in the chest with silver shot and because of like her being a dusk dancer it's like wounding her greatly and she honestly looks like she's about to die. Gabriel gets super pissed about this. He and Lachlan scuffle and then Gabriel is, manages to be able to tell him that Dior is the holy grail of Sam Michon and explains it to him a little bit and he like takes Lachlan out, gets Lachlan out of the picture basically and says like next time you come after me you better bring like an army with you because I'm not doing this again. Gabriel goes back to Phoebe then and realizes that she's not going to make it unless they get some help. And so he takes her to the Highlands, which is where he should not be because they'll basically kill him. It's kind of a death wish for him, but it's the only way that he can think of to save Phoebe. And basically the Highlands is like where the Dusk Dancers are. There's like different clans of Dusk Dancers. And Phoebe's aunt, Aunt Cinna, is kind of like a little bit of Dusk Dancer royalty kind of and has some sway among the clans. And Gabriel is able to like bring Phoebe there without them like absolutely killing him, even though they do attempt it, but he manages to like have them hold off just for now so that they can save Phoebe. They are able to manage to save Phoebe and then they are tasked with trying to convince the Dusk, Dusk Dancer clans to help them save Dior because they've definitely heard of like the godling. It was like a prophecy because Phoebe's aunt is like a seer and so she saw that there was going to be somebody like the holy grail basically uh to end day's death and so like they knew this was coming they just didn't think that it would be to a mortal they thought it would be to a dusk dancer and so they're still kind of skeptical of it while they're there though Phoebe and Gabe sleep together Gabe actually drinks from Phoebe drinks her blood and he like does it too much he like almost can't stop and then that's when he realizes though because he is able to stop. That's when he realizes though that drinking Dusk Dancer blood gives you like extra insane abilities and that's how Kiara was able to be like extra super strong because she was somehow drinking Dusk Dancer blood and once the Dusk Dancers find out about this they are pissed it's like sacred to them and they're like we had a truce with the Divock vampires if we stay off their land they'll stay off ours we'll leave each other alone but once they find out that somehow the Divocs have got their hands on Dusk Dancer blood, uh, they're pissed about it. So they're like, absolutely, we are going to go attack. We'll come with you to save Dior and we're going to take out these Divocs. And so then the Dusk Dancers are ready to march on to Donmere Game. Now, Jean-Francois is like, all right, cool. I feel caught up. Let's go back to Selene because I feel like if I keep staying with Gabe, I'm not going to get the, you know, caught up to date with what's been going on with Dior. So let's go back to Selene. And then we find out that Dior is actually not a thrall to Lily and she's just been faking it this whole time because her blood basically makes her immune to that kind of thing. And then we also find out that Worm is not a thrall to Lily any longer because when Dior saved her with her blood, it like cut that bond and so Worm has also been faking it. And we do find out that Worm's real name is Rain and she is basically like the princess of Dunmere Gain and her whole family's been slain and so she's like pissed but she's like, I obviously can't just like attack them because they'll kill me right away. So she's been faking it. So once they realize that Dior's blood can help un- thrall people they are working towards like getting all of the thralls unthralled basically so dior helps um rain unthrall like three of her friends basically and they have this like slow small little group started not very many people like less than 10 and basically they are trying to form a plan on how to 
unthrall all of the people and take down Nikita and Lily. Meanwhile, Gabe and Phoebe and the Dusk Dancers come and they're like ready to attack the gate. Selene's little like blood moth, um, Dior gives her the command to like, please tell Gabe to hold on, just give me one day because if they attack now, they're gonna have to kill all of the thralls first. And these are like innocent people, they don't wanna be there but they're being forced to by their blood because the vampires have them in thrall. And so she's like, just give me a second so I can fix all of this before you attack so that you're only attacking the vampires and only attacking like the guilty and not the innocent. And so little blood moth flutters off and Selene is now like rehealed basically. She's had enough time to like reform and she goes to Gabe and Gabriel's like, I will kill you if you come near me again because you dropped me off of that thing. Selene relays the message and then Selene actually tells Gabriel the story of when she became a vampire from Lore Voss and like basically tells him how like horrific it was for her and how she blames him for it even though like really was it his fault? No. But then Selene also tells um, Gabriel about the fact that she has actually met his father which he's never met his father, knows nothing about his father and he's like what are you talking about? How? And she tells a story about when she was younger, Gabriel was really ill, basically was gonna die, and then his mother like did like a calling card thing into a fire basically, and Selene followed the mother, and it was Gabriel's father trying to, she was trying to get like a cure for Gabriel. But yeah, basically she just tells about how she met him, and she found out where he was from so that when she was turned, she went to him and he was her teacher, Wolfric, that she's been like talking about who taught her the ways of the Asana. Um, he was her teacher. So then we're back with Dior and Dior and Rain have been kind of like digging each other and they end up kissing. It's very cute. It's like, you know, kind of like bolstering them both up for this like big like secret attack that they're going to do to try to kill Nikita and Lily and like unenthrall everybody. However, that's not exactly what happens when they go down by Nikita and Lily. Turns out Nikita actually knew about the like conspiracy, like the, the people who were able to get unenthralled and starts like playing a game with them um, because he doesn't come out right out and say like, I know that this is a thing. So he just ends up like killing them like tee hee ha ha. And so all these people are like dropping like flies. And we get the reveal that Isla, who I haven't mentioned yet, but she and Dior have like met in the past um, when they were like held prisoner. And Isla mentions her ever after, who we think is Joaquin, the like stable hand hound master kid who Dior saved in the woods, who was a thrall to Kiara, because um, they were like together before the vampires attacked. And so we've been assuming that her ever after is Joaquin, except he's not. She was actually talking about Nikita because she was not actually thralled to him. She just loves him because she's dumb. So then the stories um, of Gabriel and Selene are about to converge. So Jean-Francois brings Gabriel to Selene's like prison area, um, like the dungeon area. And boy, do they hate each other. They kind of like go back and forth and like bounce off of each other, telling the tale of this epic battle at Dunmere Gain. So we find out that like right as the battle starts to ensue, Dior actually was able to get Joaquin um, some of her blood and get her blood into all of this like nasty liquor that all of the soldiers have uh, because Gabriel told her in the past like, you know, right when about like the screaming's about to begin, people will take like a drink of alcohol to like brace themselves up uh, for this big battle. And so it was kind of an ingenious plan because then all of the people on the front lines, all of the thralls drink some of this liquor that it, has Dior's blood in it and become unenthralled, including Baptiste, which is great news. So then the epic end battle of the book begins. Tons and tons of stuff happens during this like final battle of the book. So Nikita and Gabe kind of do a little face off. Aaron and Baptiste end up having to face off because Aaron is still enthralled to Nikita. And then Lachlan and the Silver Saints arrive. So there's even more backup. Kiara is absolutely pissed at Nikita because he just basically insults her a lot and she's kind of sick of it. So she's like, you know what? I'm gonna hurt him and I'm gonna go let Dior go. I'm gonna let her escape because I don't care. So she goes down, kills Isla in a brutal way, 
lets Dior go. Dior is in rough shape because she got kind of beat up by Isla in their like throne room or whatever. So Kiara lets Dior go and then lets Rain go because Dior can't really like escape on her own. And then Gabe and Selene end up taking on each of the twin terrors. Gabe uses his sanguimency to kill one of them and Selene drinks one of them dry to like take her in, take in her powers and stuff. So Fabian ends up seeing that and he's pissed about that because now he's lost two more children and he ends up letting it slip that uh, Gabriel shouldn't trust Selene because Selene is actually the one who killed his father. And so Gabriel's like, everything that you say is a lie. Everything that you do is a deceit. And so he doesn't really trust Selene at all. Then we have the battle between like Baptiste and Aaron where Baptiste doesn't want to hurt Aaron because it's the love of his life. Aaron doesn't really realize what he's doing, but Baptiste is using like these memories to kind of pull him out of it. And Nikita is there and is about to kill Baptiste and Aaron's like, master, please let me do it. And is able to kind of break the thrall a little bit and like throws the sword away and then Baptiste absolutely pulverizes Nikita and Nikita is dead. He's very dead. Then we go back to Dior and Rain and they are trying to escape. They go to like this underground, it's not, it's like holy ground. It's, what are they called? The mother maid sepulcher or something like that. And Lily is there trying to follow them and Prince is Lily's like wolf companion is there and ends up helping them fight against Lily because when Dior was in like the throne room at some point, she ended up helping save Prince. And so then he became unenthralled. They battle it out and then Lily ends up getting stabbed through with a Dior blood soaked sword, which we know kills Ancians because she did that with Danton in the last book. Um, if they're stabbed through the heart, they'll die. And so Lily goes down, Gabe and Dior reunite. It's a very sweet, sweet moment. Then we find out that Prince, the wolf, is actually Connor, Phoebe's husband, who she thought was dead, but is actually was thralled to Lily this whole time. So it's kind of a bittersweet moment because Phoebe and Gabe were kind of together and helping each other heal from their losses. And now Phoebe gets her husband back, but now Gabe is like losing Phoebe. So it's kind of a bittersweet moment. There is also a moment when Dior is battling Lily that Dior's blood actually starts to like move. Doesn't do much more than move, so not sure about that yet, but worth noting. We do have the discovery of the full prophecy now. So before we knew from holy cup comes holy light, the faithful hand sets world aright, and in the seven martyrs sight, mere man shall end this endless night. But there's more to it than that. So we find out the second half of it is before the five come unto one with sainted blood neath virgin sun by sacred blood or else by none, this blackened veil shall be undone. So we've got the whole prophecy now. And we end up finding out that the Redeemer, right, God's son, who Dior is a descendant of, is actually the one who created the first five vampires. So the first, the, like the five ancient bloodlines of the vampires, the Redeemer is the one who created them from the five priests who killed him. So he is behind all of these vampires, which is a huge blow to Gabriel, especially because he finds out that Selene knew the whole time and he just gets pissed. They end up brawling and they don't see that Lily, in fact, was not dead, rises and twists Dior's neck, killing Dior. So they have, throughout the book, they call Lily the heartless because her father had ripped out her heart and... When she was stabbed through, it didn't actually kill her. They do actually finally manage to kill Lily, but before she dies, she kills Connor, which sucks for Phoebe because not only did she have to go through the loss of losing him once before, only to get him back for the briefest time and then to lose him again. So yeah, Lily snaps Dior's neck and Gabe and Selene are like, they blame each other for it. And they talk about how Gabriel never actually went to Dior's funeral. He couldn't handle it. Selene said that she couldn't watch Dior go into the ground. And then back with Jean-Francois, um, that's like the point where Gabriel loses it, rushes across the river of like Selene's dungeon cell or whatever because vampires can't cross rivers and just goes and like brawls with her for a bit. He gets pulled off of her and brought back to his cell. Gabriel back in his cell 
he's been taunted this whole time. Like, Jean-Francois has been taunting him. Like, do you want to drink some blood? Do you want to drink some blood? Do you want me to, like, leave one of my thralls with you to handle your, like, more carnal urges and whatever? And Gabriel, like, kind of finally gives in with Jean-Francois' thrall, Dario. And as they leave, Gabriel walks over to Dario and calls him Joaquin. And they both say, for the grail. So Dario this whole time, who was like from the very beginning when Jean-Francois had like these mortal thralls or whatever, Dario was one of them. So it was Joaquin the whole time, the guy who Dior saved and helped her put the blood in the alcohol and stuff. So that's where we leave Gabriel with Joaquin and them saying for the grail. And then we switch back to Selene's point of view where she is kind of talking to this little mouse familiar and saying how... At Dior's funeral, they do like this big funeral for her and they call her San Dior. And Selene waits in the crypt by Mother Marin, who is who Selene was trying to take Dior to to find the answers and stuff and wakes up Mother Marin. And then they're waiting down there and then Dior ends up opening her eyes. And that's how the book ends. That's how the book ends. <laughs> so Dior is not dead. It seems, one would assume. It's kind of a uh, Breaking Dawn Part 1 Bella moment. So that is the end of Empire of the Damned. And what a wild ride. What a wild ride. So now we have to wait for the third book, which doesn't have a title. I mean, who knows when the release date is because it was three years between these two books, which, God, hopefully it's not three again. I mean, like, but it, what a masterpiece that was created in that time. But I really don't want to have to wait years for the next book because I might die. But there you have it. That is the super detailed in-depth recap of Empire of the Damned. Hopefully I didn't forget anything important or get anything incorrect. Let me know down in the comments what your expected publication date is or your guess for the expected publication date for the third book. Or let me know your theory on what the third book's title is going to be. Empire of the... I don't know. I don't have a theory yet, but let me know yours down in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.